Hello and welcome to another edition of Interview with Irene. Today my guest is the lovely Georgina Perbargan and she is a head of international book promotion. So they promote other writers' books and they also do editing and interviews, book trailers. She did three wonderful book trailers for my trilogy. I'm so, so happy with them. You can also find them on this channel, in fact. And Jazz is just remarkable. I've known her for a few years now. Few years now. So thank you for coming and welcome. Thank you so much, Irene. I mean, uh, I think we've been uh, uh, we've connected for the last few years. I guess about five years right now. Uh, yeah. We've been in touch, and I'm so happy to, you know, to be doing all your book trailers personally, and uh, uh, so happy to have you coming with us uh, all the while uh, in this long journey of ours uh, in uh, promoting uh, books for uh, other authors. Right. Thank you so much for having me today. Right, and I love. I love your business cards and your magnets too. Thank you so much. That was something that we wanted to do because um, I recently had my book signing and I know how exciting it was. <laughs> and, and yeah, so I think uh, uh, goodies like this uh, will be very handy to carry along with us for book signing events and things like that because I think it's it sort of like, you know, uh, personalizes your uh, marketing approach. So in that sense, uh, I think it helps a lot. Even just a small bookmark, I right. think would make a lot of difference in terms of how uh, the general public will uh, see you as an author, right? Yeah, yeah. so uh, I'm, I'm so happy to be doing this uh, for you. And I'm so ha I'm so glad that you like the bookmarks and also business card and also the, the magnets. In fact, the magnets are really um, amazing, you know. The it's, it's a big chunk of it, and I still have it on my fridge, actually. So, and yeah. So I'm very happy to be doing this uh, with you, uh, Irene. Yes, and I will. I will have to take a po um, picture for Instagram, and then whenever I do, will link in the description. Okay. The wonderful work. When right. Every time. Um, how did you start in book promotion? Right. Um, I actually started to connect with authors as early as uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. um, I started blogging actually. So, yeah. um, and in 2013, I I've not. I've not been blogging for a very long time. I've not been writing, in fact, for a very long time. And in 2013, I told myself that, you know, in order to uh, overcome a very unpleasant situation that I was going through in my life, I had a very terrible breakup at that point of time. And then mm -hmm. I started to question myself. I said, OK, what do you like doing that you have not been doing for quite some time? And then I was, um, and then I thought, okay, I love writing, which mm. is something that I've not been doing for a very, very long time since I left my high school. And uh, I started blogging and uh, I connected with a lot of authors out there. And then they seemed to like, they seemed to really like my uh, writing style. And then from there, I, I kind of like observed the needs of authors from there, right? So I was actually in 2013, I was about to graduate from my undergraduate studies. So uh, also, which is also to, uh, to find a means of, you know, living right after uh, my graduation. So I was thinking of doing something online. I wanted to create something for myself. Uh, whereby maybe a small business kind of like that, you know, that I can uh, actually do it 
anywhere from you know anywhere any any parts of the world so um and then i was you know since i'm since i was already blogging and then i was observing the needs of authors i um, fiverr.com was actually my my first experience uh, uh providing small author services and then uh from there i i observed more of uh, authors needs and i saw something that is lacking in authors even in 2014 i've noticed this that um uh, authors do not really come on screen or you know they don't really have presence i mean internet presence and then uh, this is something that i personally feel because when i whenever i buy any books it's like uh when i google the authors right yeah I, almost always that i cannot find any any significant details about that or or it's it's either they are on the internet but they are not active and you know you kind of like cannot connect with them and you don't know okay what is the next book and you know things like that so um i've always as a reader i've always wanted to connect with the authors i you know the books that i read i've always wanted to connect with them and i feel like you know that there is just no connection between authors and readers so which is why mm-hmm. i created international book promotion with the uh, aim to bridge the gap between authors and readers right mm-hmm. so uh, what we do is that um since video marketing is something that is becoming prevalent it's it's just is the thing right is the mm-hmm. thing uh, uh in the, on the internet right now so <clears throat> i thought of leveraging the power of internet marketing to bridge the gap between authors and readers so mm-hmm. um this is what you know this is what um uh what what uh, this is the idea this is where i got the idea for international book promotion and that's how the whole thing actually started mm-hmm. uh, it's not just about video marketing alone but uh, of course we do have the basic um author needs like you know editing and formatting things like that uh yeah. however i think the primary uh, focus uh of mine right now is actually to uh, enhance the uh, author branding using video marketing uh means because i think the more you speak for your book or the more you engage with the audience the more the feedback that you will get and i think the subsequent books will be better because you know your audience and you know how they actually look at your book it's not just the marketers out there doing yeah. the work right yes yeah yes yeah. yeah. mm. this is very true and something i learned myself in my own journey so yeah right glad uh, so any what are your plans for expansion okay mm. uh, at this point of um, in 2019 may which was which is like about 3 months ago um i actually published my first book with my uh, two of my other lecturers right so i'm one of the co-authors i'm one of the co-authors and i'm so happy to be collaborating with the university that i um, studied you know uh, about 2 years ago i was uh, the student there uh, under the uh, mba program and i'm so happy to be working with uh, two of the lecturers that as she taught me and uh, uh, the experience was uh, mind blowing and and really uh, i didn't expect uh, you know to be to become a, a publisher this soon and the whole journey has actually uh accelerated the 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 rate of you know uh, um, of our growth itself and uh, when you ask about the uh, plans of expansion um at this point of time uh what i am trying to outsource is that we're trying to uh, find a hub um kind of like uh, warehouses uh in different parts of the world like let's say um india australia um we have malaysia thailand here and then uh, uh, probably on the western side of it we have uh in the united states and also the europe as a big uh, book mark book markets actually They, those are really big book markets so mm-hmm. i am trying to find and also not not to forget south africa because i've been getting a lot of requests from south africa 
uh, in terms of uh, collaboration purpose as well. So uh, it has been mind blowing. So I am thinking of finding a hub in um, all these areas whereby uh, the authors, our authors, uh, they can actually print uh, through us uh, on demand and we will have these uh, partners. We will have these partners to uh, print it out at the end and also distribute it to the readers uh, from the, uh, at the allocation. So uh, we are going to start it small, like a few places right now. And then uh, from there, we're going to expand that. That is the whole idea of it. We're going to expand the uh, book promotion and so distribution service so that more people can come to us and then more people can can buy books from us. So uh, one of the things that I have uh, on mind right now is to have a better revenue uh, uh, percentage for authors because, you know, uh, traditionally published authors, they merely get, they just get like, you know, peanuts out of their book sales, right? So uh, at, at this point of time, uh, we are uh, thinking of giving 55% of royalty to the authors and then, you know, 45% back to us. Um, and right. not and not forgetting because I think the 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 fundamental um, a fundamental requirement that a lot of publishers actually dismiss is the uh, continuous uh, marketing plan uh, being laid out for the authors. I think a lot of a lot of marketers or a lot of publishers do not do that, and as a result, uh, the book sales of the authors actually suffer. So it's like. Uh, either the authors themselves they promote them their their books or you know the book the book sales just suffer so uh, I, I don't want to uh, see this happening to my author so I, uh, for that purpose uh, I'm having this video marketing the whole thing about author branding and also video marketing uh, laid out uh, on a monthly basis for our own authors uh, so that they will have uh you know consistent marketing being done from our end and and they also will be able to participate uh in the marketing plans and join us and uh, you know speak for their books so it's if if an author is feeling uh reluctant to come on screen or probably uh if is feeling reluctant to do the marketing part to do the work together with us i think it's not going to work because uh, we feel that as an author, I think you have the power uh, together with us. You you have more power in in speaking for your book. So I think it's it's about our effort uh, from our end to brand your work, to brand yourself as an author. So uh, this is what we are trying to do at this point of time. And I have several uh, inquiries coming in from uh, South Africa in terms of book publications and how we can take things further ahead out there and also India, not to forget. So um, finding the warehouse or uh, finding the, the correct distributor is what uh, I am looking into at this point of time. And uh, we've already opened for submission, actually, book, book um, publication uh, submissions at this point of time. So uh, what we're going to do is that slowly vet through the books and then uh, uh, take it, taking taking the correct books in, taking the right books in. When when I say the right books, is that um, uh, any books that you know that doesn't trash people out there, or uh, doesn't trash any religions out there, you know, uh, purposely. So I think those books are something that we cannot, um, you know, uh, uh, cannot speak for at this point of time. But apart from that, I think. Any genre, because what I feel personally is that um, when an author gets rejected, I think it's nearly just about, you know, getting the books being rejected, but usually they won't be uh, explained why the books are being rejected. So uh, what we are trying to do is that if, if, let's say, the authors are actually willing to work with us or willing to improve the content of the book, um, or maybe, you know, uh, get the book professionally edited um, by themselves, you know, outsource an editor or probably they can use the editors that we have. So if they kind of like can come and talk to us, uh, you know, about what's going on and if they can take uh, critical uh, feedbacks uh, in, a, in a positive way, 
I think it is uh, an opportunity for them to improve the book and then we can definitely, uh, you know, be taking the book in. So it's not just about just, you know, keeping it aside mm. or just rejecting them totally. But I think uh, uh, publishers should be more humane in the way they treat authors because I think why we write as authors is because we want to express our feelings, we want to express our thoughts. And I think uh, so many authors out there, especially if you take nonfiction authors, they have so much pain or probably so so many experiences that could benefit uh, people out there. So I think it's not right to just, you know, dismiss a book uh, just because uh, it is being poorly written or probably poorly edited or poorly designed. Uh, I don't think that is a good reason. So, which is why I think at, at our end, we're going to do is that uh, we're going to give very honest feedback to the authors. And then um, if they're able to uh, improve the book, then it's going to be wonderful. We can actually work with them, right? Wonderful. Right. Yes. So, um, on a slightly different note, do what? What do you do aside from the promoting? Do you have any hobbies? Okay, um, actually, apart from book promotion, I have um, a separate um, editing service uh, company. It's a, it's a small company uh, founded in 2016. Um, this is actually uh from the encouragement of my very own lecturer because um uh, we have i mean in universities i believe you know as a lecturer you ha we have a lot of publications we have a lot of journal papers being submitted to journals and things like that and theses right and dissertations so uh, my lecturer was actually uh, she said you know uh, you can write very well and i think you you have a very um, good skills uh, in academic writing and then she said you know why not you start your service like you know you read people's work and then you give commands so you edit their work so that it is you know it is good enough to be accepted for um, Q1 journal publications Q2 journal publications so I I founded uh, international I, I founded IBP editing services and then um, it is going good so far because I have uh, been working with a lot of my very own lecturers mm -hmm. uh, for the undergraduate program and also my MBA program. So uh, it's good to be working with universities that I studied at, both the universities that I studied at. And then in fact, yesterday I was going through the newsletter for my very own faculty. Uh, I, I was very thrilled to do that. So that is something that I do. And then uh, when I have, uh, when you talk about habits, um, mm. I, I like to go for my evening jog because I feel like, you know, after a very stressful day, I think that is the whole yeah. time that I get to just go for a long walk and then, you know, not think about um, anything that's stressful. But I think it is during that time I am able to get a lot of ideas and I'm able to get, you know, I'm able to calm myself down and uh, probably generate more uh, ideas, more uh, 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 probably useful things that I can, you know, schedule ahead. So um, that is a, that is a time of uh, the day that I really look forward. And then mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, um, I also go for uh, swimming, you know, whenever I can, I 